Hello everybody, happy Sabbath day. This is March 10th. This is the continuation, part two of fruit and fruits. We did um, the background and the introduction. We did cover Genesis chapter three, how fruit sometimes is talking about children, how fruit is sometimes talking about our works and also about how fruit can be, well, fruit, something you eat. All right, let's go to Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 1. We covered all the basics. I can't believe it takes an hour to go through the basics. But now we're going to start into the meat and potatoes, I guess you could say. As we say in the United States, pip pip chidio. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. Hmm. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. He fenced it. Now, why would you fence a vineyard? Because you don't want wild animals getting in there and stomping down your plants and eating your plants. So, you know, you put up a fence, right? That's why people put up fences. And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof. Hmm. That's, I see something right there. He gathered out the stones thereof. Because you don't, you know, plants are, can't grow where there's rocks on top of them, right? And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it. And also made a wine press therein, and he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. Okay, domesticated grapes are sweet. Wild grapes, not necessarily. Sometimes they're bitter. Verse 3 And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem, and men of Judah, judge, I pray you betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes? And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up. Which is what happens when you, you know, you take the vine, I mean the uh, the fence away. The goats get in and they start eating the vineyard, right? Goats eat everything. You know, the sheep and the goats. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. In other words, the uh, swine will come and um, step all over plants and trample them down. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor dig, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. All right, that's Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 6. And then here's verse 7. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Ooh, does that make sense? For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but beheld oppression. For righteousness, but behold, a cry. And why were they crying? Because they were being oppressed. All right, uh, let's see, let's, okay, so that's Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. And remember we were talking about uh, the vineyard? Well, let's take a look. Oh, I wanted to say um, thank you for all of you that give me encouragement. Um, you know, when I get a half a dozen people saying they're going to miss me and everything, I appreciate it. And, 
Uh, okay, Mark chapter 12, verse 1. And he who, he who, Jesus, and he begat, began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard. Didn't we just read about a vineyard? Yeah. A certain man planted a vineyard and set an hedge about it. A hedge is a fence, right? And set an hedge about it and digged a place for the wine fat and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. Isn't that almost exactly what we just read in Isaiah? I think so. Now, a husbandman, he's just a basically a farmer that takes care of the vineyard for the owner of the vineyard, right? And at the and at the season he sent to the husbandman a servant that he might receive from the husbandman of the fruit of the vineyard. And they caught him and beat him and sent him away empty. And again he sent unto them another servant. And at him they cast stones and wounded him in the head and sent him away shamefully handled. Hmm. And again he sent another, and him they killed, and many others, beating some and killing some. You know, these servants are uh, the prophets of God, people. You know, God sent his servants, the prophets, into the vineyard. And again he sent another, and him they killed, and many others, beating some and killing some. Having yet therefore one son, Christ, and having yet therefore one son, his well-beloved, he sent him also last unto them, saying, they will reverence my son. But those husbandmen said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. Who killed Christ? I think you know, and it wasn't the Romans. Because the Romans didn't want the inheritance. This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. And they took him and killed him and cast him out of the vineyard. What shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandman and will give the vineyard unto others. And have ye not read this, this scripture? The stone which the builders rejected is become the head of of the corner. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And they sought to lay hold on him, but feared the people, for they knew that he had spoken the parable against them, and they left him and went their way. Hmm. Very interesting. So what was this stone that the builders rejected? Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Huh? What? But Paul's talking to the Corinthians. Corinth, Corinth was a uh, city in Greece. It was a Greek city. How could he be telling them that they were, how their fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea? And he's talking about the Red Sea because that's where they went with Moses. And if you've read the book of Exodus, you'll know that there was a, a pillar of clouds and uh, a pillar of fire. So let's 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 take a look at that again. Now the only way that this could apply is this if the Corinthians or at least some of them were 
Israelites. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat. What spiritual meat? The manna. They got manna from heaven, remember? And did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Remember, Moses struck the walk, rock and it brought forth water. Verse 5, But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Why is he telling this to the Corinthians? If they're a bunch of Gentiles grafted into this Jewish tree, why is he talking about Moses and Israel? Personally, I think some of these Corinthians were, were Israel. After all, the New Testament was written in Greek, not Hebrew, contrary to what the Hebrew roots people will tell you. All right, let's go back and read some more. Now, just a quick refresher. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 17, uh, when Adam and Eve fell, and God pronounced a curse upon them. And unto Adam he said, God speaking, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. Thorns and thistles, people. Remember that. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So, just remember, thorns were to be a curse to Adam. All right, let's go to the book of Hosea, chapter 9 and verse 1. We'll probably read the whole thing. Now, Hosea was written after Israel and Judah had really, really angered the Lord. And uh, it's what it's called the minor prophets. Not because their importance is minor, but usually because of their size. Rejoice not, O Israel, for joy, as other people. For thou hast gone a whoring from thy God. Thou hast loved a reward upon every corn floor. The floor and the winepress shall not feed them, and the new wine shall fail in her. They shall not dwell in the Lord's land. But Ephraim, Ephraim was one of the two children of Joseph. They were the half-tribes. Joseph was one of the twelve tribes. Ephraim and Manasseh were his two sons. They are considered the the two half-tribes. But they're out of Joseph. But Ephraim shall return to Egypt. Now, Egypt, I usually, I mean, almost, it seems like every time Egypt's mentioned in the Bible, it's, it's a bad thing. But Ephraim shall return to Egypt, whether that's physically or spiritually. I'm, I'm, I'm of the opinion it's spiritually, but it could have been physically, too. I don't know. But Ephraim shall return to Egypt, and they shall eat unclean things in Assyria. You see, the Assyrian Empire took northern Israel, as opposed to the southern kingdom of Judah. They took northern kingdom of Israel into captivity as slaves and they never returned back 
to the land. See, the Assyrian Empire, what they would do is if they conquered, let's say they conquered um, Texas and California, they would take the people from California and put them in Texas and then take the people from Texas and move them to California. That's what they would do. And this way, you don't know what's around the landscape. You don't know the land, the layout of the land. The Assyrians would know the layout of the land better than you. You see, somebody that knows the land and where all the caves are and all the places to hide had a distinct advantage over an invading army. And another thing, too, the Assyrians absolutely forbid people to speak their native tongue. I mean, if you spoke, if you were in the Assyrian captivity and you spoke Hebrew to another Hebrew, and the Assyrians couldn't understand you, you know, they would think that you're plotting against them to, to overthrow them. So they absolutely forbid you to speak Hebrew. Upon death, they would kill you. Oh, you know, uh, you know, it's like, can you imagine um, if we did this in Miami, Florida or California? Oh, you speak Spanish? <laughs> off with her head. You take your sword out and you chop off their head. Well, that is what the Assyrians did to people, and not just the Hebrews. I mean, they did it to everybody. I mean, when they conquered you, it was over, people. The Assyrians were a very, very nasty bunch. And uh, their god was Dagon. He was the, um, the fish god. He looked like a mermaid. You want to see what Dagon looked like? Look at uh, Ariel, the little mermaid thing of Disney. Look at her father. That's what Dagon looked like. He was a man from the waist up and a fish from the waist down. I wonder if Disney picked that up for a coincidence, right? Yeah. They shall not dwell in the Lord's land, but Ephraim shall return to Egypt, and they shall eat unclean things in Assyria. What are they going to eat? Pig, probably. They shall not offer one offerings to the Lord. Neither shall they be pleasing unto him. Their sacrifices shall be unto them as the bread of mourners. All that eat thereof shall be polluted, for their bread for their soul shall not come into the house of the Lord. What will you do in the solemn day and in the day of the feast of the Lord? Well, that's real simple. You're not going to do nothing because you're in Assyria and the Assyrians are not going to let you um, worship the God your way. No, 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 no. For lo, they are gone because of destruction. Egypt shall gather them. Memphis shall bury them. We're not talking about Tennessee, people. We're talking about Egypt. Memphis, Egypt. Memphis, Tennessee was named after Memphis, Egypt. Memphis shall bury them. The pleasant places for their silver. Nettles shall possess them. Thorns shall be in their tabernacles. Thorns. The days of visitation are come. The days of recompense are come. Israel shall know it. The prophet is a fool. The spiritual man is mad. For the multitude of thine iniquity and the great hatred. We're in a day of, today is a great multitude of iniquity. You know, every time I think uh, things can't get any worse, they do. Um, I, those of you that are not on my Google Plus, get, get signed up to my Google Plus. I put news out, you know, I spend probably an hour a day going through the news looking up appropriate news articles. So, you know, uh, take a look at my Google+. Plus. Um, you know, the, this Pizzagate thing with the, uh, the, the children as sex slaves and, and they're being sacrificed. And uh, one of the CNN news people, he went to a, a cannibal tribe in India and he actually ate human, uh, well, he ate brains. 
I'm not sure if they were human brains. I think they were. I, I'm not sure. I, I just kind of glanced at the story, and I'm like, I don't need to read this. Uh, for those of you that don't know it, there's a disease uh, that they call prions. Um, and it, it's basically what mad cow disease is. And there was a British uh, scientist, like a doctor or something like that. I forget the exact qualifications, but the guy, you know, the guy had a lot of medical training and he was like a researcher. Um, not all people get into medicine to get rich, but uh, he said mad cow disease broke out in, in Britain. He says the only way it could have broke out is if they were feeding the cows brains, infected brains in their feet. And uh, I think it's encephalitis or something. I don't know exactly. You know, I'm not an, an expert on this kind of stuff. I mean, I've read about it, know a little bit. But uh, there's a tribe of cannibals in New Guinea. It's uh, north of Australia. And uh, they suffer from this. Because uh, when their relatives die, they cook them and eat them. Yeah. Hey, let's have some of these people come to America. We love diversity. Diversity is our strength, right? Why not have cannibals here? You know, the CNN, uh, they're uh, doing, you know, having their guy on television eat brains. You know, zombies, brains, brains. You know, just when you think things can't get any sicker and any worse, they do. Sometimes I hate doing this research. It it just I can't believe it. The Satanists are they're they're out they're in your face. You know, there's a reason why the Lord said to kill them. Don't let them live. Thou shalt not suffer or allow. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Those that had a familiar spirit, thou shalt surely put the, them to death. Their blood shall be upon them. The Bible says the same thing about sodomites. You think God changed his mind when, when Christ hung on the cross? No, he didn't change his mind. God, God, say, God, God still hates those that worship Satan. And, and he knows they're going to get positions of power. They're going to become the chief of police, and they're going to become district attorneys and judges, and, and they're going to become politicians and presidents and prime ministers, and House of Lords, and House of Commons, and, and you know, um, chancellors of Germany. Oh. What will ye do in the solemn day and in the day of the Feast of the Lord? For lo, they are gone because of destruction. Egypt shall gather them, Memphis shall bury them, the pleasant places for their silver. Nettles shall possess them. Thorns shall be in their tabernacles. The days of visitation are come. The days of recompense are come. Israel shall know it. The prophet is a fool. The spiritual man is mad. For the multitude of thine iniquity and the great hatred. The watchman of Ephraim was with my God. But the prophet is a snare of a fowler in all his ways and hatred in the house of his God. They have deeply corrupted themselves as in the days of Gibbish. I'm sorry, Gibeah. Gibbe Therefore he will remember their iniquity. He will visit their sins. I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I saw your fathers as the first stripe in the fig tree at her first time. See, Israel was likened to grapes, and Judah was, their symbol was the fig tree. Remember when Jesus cursed the fig tree? Oh, yeah. He said, let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. Because Judah, you know, the Jews have, there's been no fruit. Judaism has been no fruit since the time of Christ. Zero. 
I saw your fathers as the first stripe in the fig tree at their her first time, but they went to Baal Peor. Baal was, it's a word that means Lord, but it became so associated with Satanism that the Lord said, don't call me that word anymore. But they went to Baal Peor and separated themselves unto that shame. And their abominations were according as they loved. As for Ephraim, their glory shall fly away like a bird from the birth and from the womb and from the conception. Though they bring up their children, yet will I breathe them. And there shall not be a man left, yea, woe also to them when I depart from them. Ephraim, as I saw Tyrus, is planted in a pleasant place. Didn't we read that in Isaiah? But Ephraim shall bring forth his children to the murderer. Give them, O Lord, what wilt thou give? Give them a miscarrying womb and dry breasts. All their wickedness is in Gilgal, for there I hated them. For the wickedness of their doings, I will drive them out of mine house. I will love them no more. All their princes are revolters. Do you know what a revolt is? The Russian Revolution was a, a revolt. A revolution. Ephraim is smitten. Their root is dried up. They shall bear no fruit. Yea, though they bring forth, yet will I slay even the beloved fruit of their womb. My God will cast them away because they did not hearken unto him. And they shall be wanderers among the nations. Yeah, don't you know that? Israel would be wanderers among the nations. Israel would be wanderers among the nations. And that word nation is sometimes translated as Gentiles. It's the same word, goyim. The singular is goy. Sometimes it's nation, sometimes it's nation, uh, Gentile or nation. Goyim is plural, it's nations or Gentiles. And this was fulfilled when the Assyrian army came and drove Israel out of the land. They took them as slaves, took them away from Israel, and planted them in Assyria. And for those of you that don't know it, when the Assyrian Empire was conquered by the Babylonians, Israel hightailed it, a lot of them hightailed it, uh, to the Caucasus Mountains which was kind of a north-northeast, northeast of uh, Syria. And uh, it's kind of like north of Turkey. Well, Turkey used to be Greece until the uh, Ottoman Turks, the Muslims, overran it and killed the, um, killed the Christians and took it over, and then they called it Turkey. You know, Muslims, that, that religion of peace that they keep talking about, yeah, that that those people. Um, but Turkey is sort of kind of they're sort of kind of Muslim, but they're they're like a secular Muslim. They they have mosques, but they're not crazy crazy like they are in um, other Muslim countries. There are some Muslim countries that uh, you just don't dare break their traditions or mores, as you could say, uh, their customs, like the women walking around. A woman, you wouldn't, if you're a woman, you wouldn't want to walk around in a bathing suit on the street in some of these countries. No. You know, if you were fully dressed and had a, a scarf over your head, that you'd probably be all right, but um, I don't know. Now, here's an interesting verse, Isaiah 38, verse 21. There was a guy that was sick. For I, Isaiah had said, 
Let them take a lump of figs and lay it for a plaster upon the boil, and he shall recover. All right, take your King James Bible and go to Jeremiah. We're going to read chapter 24. All right, Jeremiah chapter 24, verse 1. I tell you what, anybody that can read the book of Jeremiah and believe in the pre-trib rapture is just spiritually blind. You know, there's a reason why the, the demon nominational church tells people, oh, well, don't read the Old Testament. That's for the Jews. Don't read that. That doesn't apply to us. We're the church. We're the New Testament church. Because I tell you what, when you read Jeremiah, wow, God's anger. I mean, it was like, it wasn't quite like the flood of Noah, but it was close. The Lord showed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of the Lord. After that, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, see, Northern Israel was carried away by Assyria. Southern Judah, Jerusalem, see, northern Israel's capital was um, Samaria. Israel was Samaria for their capital. Ju Judah was Jerusalem. Assyria took the Samaritans away, and then the Babylonians conquered Assyria and took Jerusalem and Judah. The Lord showed me, and behold, two baskets of figs, the symbol of Judah, were set before the temple of the Lord. After that, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away captive Jehoiakim, Je uh, Je Je the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah with the carpenters and the smiths. No, it's not the smiths and jones. You, you know, you've heard of blacksmiths? Well, that's what they were. With the carpenters and smiths from Jerusalem and had brought them to Babylon. One basket had very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe. And the other basket had very naughty figs which could not be eaten because they were so bad. You know, naughty figs. Uh, what's that little story they tell kids about Santa, about don't be a naughty kid because Santa won't leave you anything? Well, he'll leave you a lump of coal. Well, that was me, boy. I was the naughty kid. Um, so you had good figs, and you had naughty figs. Then said the Lord unto me, What seest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, Figs, the good figs, very good, and the evil, very evil, that cannot be eaten because, I'm sorry, that cannot be eaten, they are so evil. What is this saying? There's two seed lines in the world. There's the good seed, and then there's the bad seed, the wheat and the tares. Matter of fact, uh, there's two things that Satan and his people do not want Christians to know. One, they don't want Christians to know what their identity is, Israel, and two, they don't want you to know that Satan, well, the fallen angels, whatever, has a seed line on this earth. And if you don't believe me and you think I'm off my rocker, please look at my playlist, The Promises to Abraham, and then look at the uh, Who Are the Sons of God playlist. There's about 30 hours of study. And if you've got any spiritual discernment at all, and you pray for understanding, and you're a sheep and not a goat, by the time you finish, you'll say, boy, that, that crazy Bob's, he's right. Wow.
Matthew. Let's go to Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. Another parable put he, he forth unto them, saying, this is Christ speaking, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares, or weeds, among the wheat went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. See, the tares aren't going to bring up fruit, not good fruit. Matter of fact, I did an entire study on the parable of the wheat and the tares. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good field, uh, seed in thy field? Didn't you sow good seed in your field? Huh? What happened? Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? Where these weeds come from? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? And he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares. Gather ye together first the tares. Gather ye together first the tares, the weeds and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. But the pre-trib rapture people will tell you, oh, this is wrong. Jesus is wrong. He, he, it should have said, but gather the wheat first. You know, the pre-trib rapture. Uh, no. And you know why? You know why? Because the tares are going to force the wheat to separate themselves. From the wheat. There's going to come a day when the Sodomites start persecuting and killing the Christians so bad in San Fag Sicko that the Christians will be forced to leave. And if you've ever read the story of Sodom and Gomorrah and Lot, when there's not 10 righteous people in the entire city of San Francisco, look out. So, all right, so in verse 36, Matthew 13, 36, then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house and his disciples came unto him saying, declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, he that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares, or the weeds, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil, the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity or sin, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. You see, God is gathering the tares in the cities. Chicago had 762 murders last year, people. That's an average of two a day. Two murders. That doesn't even include the shootings. I mean, you know, there's a lot of shootings where the people don't die. And that's just Chicago. God's gathering his tares, people. All right, let's go back. Um, Jeremiah 24. 
Then said the Lord unto me, What seest thou, Jeremiah? Verse 3. And I said, Figs, the good figs, very good, and the evil, very evil, that cannot be eaten, they are so evil. I wonder why they used the word evil instead of bad or spoiled. You know, you're wondering if these figs are actually evil. But then it says, you know, they can't be eaten, so I don't know. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive to Judah, whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for their good. See, like a father, God spanking Judah. For I will set mine eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land, and I will build them and not pull them down, and I will plant them and not plant them up, uh, pluck them up. And I will give them an heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, and they shall return unto me with their whole heart. And as the evil figs which cannot be eaten, they are so evil, surely thus saith the Lord. So will I give Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and his princes, and the residue of Jerusalem that remain in this land, and them that dwell in the land of Egypt. And I will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth for their hurt, to be a reproach and a proverb, a taunt and a curse in all places whither I shall drive them. And I will send the sword, that's war, and I will send the sword, the famine, and the pestilence among them till they be consumed from off the land that I gave unto them and to their fathers. You see, when there's a war, usually either the farmers get conscripted into the army and they don't plant their fields because they're off fighting, or the farmers are killed in their field when they, you know, the army comes in. So either way, the farmers get killed off. And then after the farmers die and don't plant their fields, well, then comes famine. But after, if you don't have any food, your body is weak and breaks down and you're prone to disease, well, then comes pestilence or disease. So that is how it works. Let's go back and read verse 7 again. And I will give them an heart to know me, that I am the Lord. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. Now turn to Ezekiel 11 and verse 19. And I will give them one heart. And I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and will give them an heart of flesh. So he's going to replace the stone with flesh. How about Ezekiel 36, 26? A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit. And a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. So, we're going to get a new heart, new spirit. Spirit of Christ, right? All right, turn to Matthew 7. I guess we're going to read the whole chapter, and then um, I'm going to close this out been 45 minutes almost. Uh, also, you know, the reason I'm uh, doing all this, uh, well, as you probably all you've noticed, is the media has been blasting about this white privilege and, you know, blaming the whites for everything wrong in the world and this and that and the other. Um, that's the reason why I did the Black History Month. That's the reason why I did the uh, Flint water thing. You know, I'm trying to wake people up. You know, I, I'm, I really am. I mean, I want them to look 
and say, why, what's up with these newspapers and TV stations? Why do they hate, why do they hate white people? I mean, are all these, you know, what's up with that? You know, I'm trying to wake people up. So, you know, I, I'm not proud because of the color of my skin. That's not something to boast about. I mean, I am what I am because that's what the Lord made me, you know, but, um, some people take it wrong and, and you know, they they put on a, a swastika armband and, and do the Heil Hitler and march down the street. And that's just not, that's not it, people. That's not it. You know? But I'm trying to wake people up. When the uh, persecution comes and the church people look at who is doing the persecuting, and who is being persecuted, they're going to wake up, but not until. Because they were always taught that they're going to fly away, the church is going to fly away out of here, and it's going to be the people that call themselves Jews that are being persecuted and killed and uh, trouble, in trouble. But actually, it's going to be the opposite of what they think. They're going to be here. They're going to be the... The church people are going to be the ones being persecuted by the people that they call the chosen people. So when that happens, some of them are going to figure out that they were lied to. A lot of them are going to lose their lukewarm faith. Um, but let's take a look at Matthew chapter 7. So now you know why I'm, I'm doing this stuff. You know, I... You know, this Flint water thing is like absolutely unimportant. But uh, I'm sick of hearing, um, I'm just sick and tired of hearing the news media blame the whites for everything. You know, what, what can I tell you? Jesus said, judge not that ye be not judged. For with what measure ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Yeah. Do you drink and you condemn somebody that smokes? Or do you smoke, but uh, does somebody that commits adultery condemn you because you smoke? I mean, you know. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Ooh, we got to read this. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Are they talking about four-legged dogs? Maybe, maybe not. Let's take a look. The answer about the dog is found in Deuteronomy 23 and verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Parallelism, people. A sodomite is likened unto a dog. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Make sense now? Neither cast ye your pearls before swine lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Ask, and it shall be given you. 
Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or man, what man is there of you, whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good gifts to them that ask him? You know, the next time an atheist points out, well, you know, there's all these starving children in India. Why doesn't God feed them if, if, if God's so loving? Well, because they don't ask the Lord God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They ask the gods of the Hindus. They ask Krishna, Shiva, the destroyer. They ask Vishnu, Brahma. They're asking devils to feed them. They're not asking the God of the Bible. If they asked the God of the Bible to feed them, I'm sure he would. But don't think you're going to ask the devil for something and, and God's going to give you what you want. That's giving glory to the devil. You want something from the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? You better ask the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not Shiva, the destroyer. And if you don't know what Shiva is, take a look at that uh, Hindu statute in front of CERN, C-E-R-N. That's a statue of Shiva, the destroyer. It came from India. They actually made it in India and shipped it to uh, Switzerland. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good gifts to them that ask him? That's right. you got to ask him. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Isn't that interesting? That Jesus said uh, the great commandment was to love the Lord, and the second commandment was like unto it, to love thy neighbor as thyself. And these two uh, were all the law and the prophets. I'm paraphrasing. But here... Here's the golden rule. Therefore, all, th all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go therein, uh, go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets, which uh, you can watch on TBN and the 700 Prophets of Baal Club. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Wait, no, I, I, I read that wrong. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns? See, I told you, thorns. Pay attention. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? What did God curse the ground with to Adam in Genesis 3? Thorns and thistles. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth, but he that doeth, but he that doeth, oh man, Jesus is, is teaching lordship salvation, sounds like, huh? But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Huh, okay. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Don't they do that on TBN? Oh yeah. 
Praise the Jesus. I prophesy unto thee. Send your tithes to uh, 1 800 666 6666 and uh, pledge, your, pledge your tithe to us. Praise the praise Jesus. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And we know that rock is Christ. We just read that in, in what was it, Corinthians? And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. You better build your house on Christ, people. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these things, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. See, the scribes, they were the copyists of the law. They had the letter of the law. Christ had the spirit of the law. After all, he was the one that gave the law to Moses on the mountain. All right, people. Well, it's been almost an hour. And, um, you know, I appreciate the encouragement. Um, I know some of you really appreciate these studies. Sometimes I think nobody really cares. Um, and try to be nice to each other, you know. Um you know, when you write stuff, it's it's so easy to take things the wrong way. Uh, just depends on your frame of mind. I've blasted people and then, and then looked at what they really said, and then I went back and I've had to apologize to them because uh, you know how it is. The sheep are always getting butted by the goats. You know, when they take their, their horns and butt you, you know, they hit you. Um, you know, we get defensive, you know, we should be kind to each other and, you know, I know I don't know everything. That's for sure. I mean, if Jesus didn't even know when he's coming back, I, I'm going to act like I know everything. Oh boy. But, uh, yeah, try to be, try to be kind to each other, you know? Um, I mean, I've been guilty of that as any anything you know I've had to apologize to a few people more than a few so all right well um, this is chaplain Bob Walker light of the world ministries John 8 12 Jesus said I am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life and Jesus is that light of life and all blessings praise glory and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world in Jesus' precious name, amen.